Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek at Spiel 2016. I'm sitting down once again with Tony Boydell of Surprise Stair Games. Hi, Welcome Beth. back. Well, thank you for having me again. <laughs> and thank you. Very excited. This has been a title a lot of people have been really excited to hear about. Yeah. Guilds of London. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about it as well, yes. It's my, uh, it's my magnum opus. It's taken me a while to get it to print, but it's, it's finally here. Very pleased with it. All right, take us through. What are we attempting well, I, to do? If I start with a very basic elevator pitch, um, it's sort of a cross between El Grand, classic area control game, and Blue Moon City, which is another kind of area control game. Um, so the idea is that you are playing cards, which have multiple functions, to seed your liverymen, these little coloured meeples here, around the various guilds of London. And when those guilds are, f are full enough, there's a little number on each of the guilds that tells you how full they need to be, they will have a vote to see who's going to be in charge. Uh, and so what you're trying to do is get the most of your pieces into that space. But there are some tricks and, and twiddles that you can do as well to, to, to sort of mess with that as well. And if you win a guild, you get points and you also get bonus actions that do other things, maybe help you out in other guilds, give you more cards, give you more victory points and so on. Now, is this based on the idea that the city of London within London, yes. the city? Yes, the guild, the guild's uh, concept is very real in London. It's still, it's, in fact, it's a very big tourist thing now. Um, and I, the original designer of the game used real guild names as well with their real shields. At the back of these cards, you can see the tiles have got these lovely images of the shields. Yeah. Um, and the original prototype had all the real guilds with all of their real delivery on there as well. Um, but l when I asked, uh, asked them all for permission to use their, their heralds, uh, most of them said no. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to start again and come up with 37 um, new shields to represent the different industries of the sort of medieval England. Um, three of the guilds did say yes, and they get a special bit of love in the rule book as well. Aww. So thank you very much. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, so that's the game. It's, it's a, an area control. The, the key thing is that you, you're doing all of this stuff with the cards in your hand. So cards can either be used to move, which is what the symbol is about. So if I play that purple card out from my hand, I can move one of my guys to anywhere that's got a purple ah, icon on it. Easy enough. I can if I want to, if I'm running a bit low of guys to move, I can pay a coin and recruit a new guy from a pool that's outside of the game. Or I can use a card for the, the bulk of its image, which is this special ability. Cards have a cost, so this is free and then it has something that it does. So there's a lot of iconography in the game. Most of the icons people grok very quickly, but there are a few others where you need to look at the reference sheet. I'll move the card over there. So this one, for instance, says, move this special piece, which is this beetle guy, <laughs> onto somewhere that's yellow, so I could move him over there, and I also get a victory Make point. point. Yeah. So there's lots and lots of effects on the card. There are, 100 and, there are 105 basic cards in the game, but uh, there are about 65, 70 unique effects and variations on those unique effects. And they're all sort of uh, laid out with the iconography. Uh, it's all about controlling those cards, getting the people in the right place, managing your hand. Um, at the end of your turn, if you've played any cards at all, you can get two more from the deck. You can skip your entire turn and draw four cards, which means you can start saving cards between the rounds and then having nice explosive turns where you do <laughs> lots and lots of combinations. This is always fun. Exactly. I mean, this one for instance, says, if I move three or more people this round, I get three victory points. So if I'm going to move three or, four pe three or more people anyway, I'll do that and then I get the bonus three points as well. Bam. <laughs> During the game, you also collect these special end game bonus cards. Um, and the icon is on this tile, I'll show this one. So this is the bonus for the winner of this Builder's Guild gets four points and a choice of the top three special cards. And you choose which one you'd like to go for, because at the end of the game you get extra points. So about half your points in the game will be scored during the game, and the other half will be scored from the cards that you collect. So that one, for instance, is nice and easy. Two victory points for every guild that's blue that you control. There's one last thing, which is uh, a bit of a point of dispute with some players is, is, the, is the nasty neutral liverymen. During guild resolution, we see who has the control of the most people. Um, but it's not as simple as red's got two, blue has got one. Because during the resolution, if anybody's got neutral guys, they can swap out ah. one of their neutral guys. So they, instead of the guy voting for blue, who he worked for, he's now voting, not at all, he's abstaining. He's saying, I'm not really interested. So in this case, it made no difference to red winning, but it has stopped blue from getting a nice little second place bonus, because every tile has got a nice second place bonus to go with it as well. 
So you can really you upset can really mess. You can. <laughs> but these are public information. There's a limited number in each game, so three players, it would be six. You take them during by winning guilds, coming second, or by card play, and then they're in front of you, so people know people you've know. got them. Yeah. Um, I never like to be bullied, so if somebody's got a lot of these, I say, okay, I'm taking this. Use them. <laughs> Use them or lose them, guys. <laughs> yeah. now, how long would a complete game take us? Two players is a slightly different setup, but it takes about, when you know, when you know all the icons, it's about 45 minutes. Uh, four players, about an hour and a half, when you know what you're doing, so. And that's, that's over, because uh, it's taken 10 years to get it to the table. That is 10 years <laughs> worth of, of playtest stats, 10 years worth. So appreciate it. That's right, it means what it says on the box. Tony has put his heart and soul in this. I have, yes. <laughs> well, I, I know a lot of people have been really buzzing about this one even before the show, so I'm so, so happy. Thank that you, yes. You got it. The, yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay, TMG as well, eh? <laughs> awesome guys, awesome guys. Um, so I'm sure you definitely want to check this out, which is Guilds of London, which from the fabulous Tony Boydell. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Can yeah. I just say, I'd just like to say happy birthday to Sneaky Brian. <laughs> Thank you very much, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>